Welcome back for part 2 of What If Ahsoka Stayed in the Jedi Order. Thank you for your support on part 1 of this What If. If you haven't seen the first part, the link will be in the description below. Two Force users who were foiling the plans of Darth Sidious were Ahsoka Tano and Asajj Ventress. After managing to evade the grasp of the pirates on Florum, Ahsoka received a transmission from the Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker. Ahsoka's master asked her to arrive on the planet of Scipio at once, as the Separatists had invaded the planet. Ahsoka and Ventress quickly find their way to the snow-covered planet, stopping as they saw what was in front of them. A large Separatist fleet descended upon Scipio, and they began firing at Ahsoka's ship. The Jedi Knight sent an emergency signal to Anakin and Padme on the surface below, and Anakin deployed the 501st Legion to complement the forces of Commander Thorne. Ahsoka is soon hit by the large Separatist carrier, and they begin the plunge to the surface below. Using the Force, Ahsoka and Ventress bring the Inferno to a controlled stop, sliding down a mountain to the Republic forces. Igniting her lightsabers, Ahsoka cuts a hole in the canopy of her roof, and they leap out before the ship explodes. Turning to face the running Anakin, he has no time as he jumps into his ship and is surprised to see Ventress. Ahsoka runs to Clovis' office, and deflecting the attacks of several Vulture droids, then force pushing Clovis out of the room, Ahsoka activates the holo projector. Dooku expected to see Clovis, but Ahsoka had brought Ventress, and the former master and apprentice stare at each other with intense hatred. The tension is broken by an explosion from outside, as droid gunships fire at their building. Padme is caught by Ahsoka and Ventress with the Force, and they escort her to the other side of a mountain. Their attempted escape, however, is blocked by Dooku, who serenely landed in his solar sailor. Brandishing his lightsaber, Dooku used his other hand to send a torrent to Force signing of Ventress, but it was blocked by Ahsoka's lightsaber, forming a cross shape. As she started to lose her balance on the slippery surface, the attack suddenly stopped as Anakin flew in. The Jedi Knight jumped out of the gunship and nearly sliced Dooku into two, were it not for the quick blade work of the apprentice, and the two dueled across the snow. Ahsoka and Ventress were about to join the fight with Anakin, before Dooku extended one hand and pulled Ventress towards him and impaled her with his lightsaber. Ahsoka gripped her lightsabers tighter, as she watched some of the Night Sister magic imbued with Ventress flow away, and leapt to Dooku with increased aggression. Unfortunately for Ahsoka, Dooku knew all of the weaknesses of Ahsoka's form, having trained under Master Yoda, quickly disarming one of her blades, then pushing her to the edge of the cliff. Anakin's rage at seeing Ahsoka at the edge of death fueled his attacks, and Dooku is forced to the cliff edge near Ahsoka, but elegantly dodged any killing strikes, until he was hit in the chest by a green blade. From the floor, Ventress had used her last breaths to throw Ahsoka's fallen lightsaber into her former master, and now her revenge was complete. Anakin and Ahsoka have no time to reflect on the demise of both Dooku and Ventress, as Padme was struggling on the other side of the mountain, so they rushed into a gunship to collect her, leaving the fate of Clovis to the artificial avalanche created by the fighting forces. Padme and the bodies of Dooku and Ventress are left with the Republic forces, whilst Ahsoka and Anakin each enter a starfighter from the hangar and fly to Dooku's dreadnought. The Republic Venator class Star Destroyers had lowered the defences of the Separatist fleet, and the two Jedi Knights comfortably infiltrated the ship. Going straight for the bridge, Anakin ordered all fire on the cruiser to be stopped until they had done a full search. Beheading the pilot battle droids, there was suddenly an incoming transmission from Admiral Trench, whom Anakin knew to be involved in the battle on the planet of Ringo Vinda, having heard it from Obi-Wan. The Admiral was showing concern for the conditions of Clone Trooper Tup, rather than delight, which was confusing the Jedi, and Anakin asks R2-D2 to relay the message to the Council, before placing detonators and escaping. Flying back to one of the three Venator-class Star Destroyers, Anakin and Ahsoka back to Coruscant and meet the Jedi Council. The Council members are somewhat disappointed at the death of Dooku, as they wanted to extract the Sith for information, but at least one of the Sith was dead. The question was, who was the other? The message from Admiral Trench pointed to something suspicious that had been masked from the Jedi, and perhaps the clones were not to be trusted. 
their thoughts are interrupted when they received a transmission from Jedi Master Shaq T that the Separatists were trying to cover the secrets of the clones. That is it for part 2 of what if Ahsoka stayed in the Jedi Order. If you'd like to see a part 3 soon, please like this video, turn on your notification bell, subscribe to this channel and my other channel What If Films for more What Ifs. And as always, leave a comment on what What If you'd like to see next and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching and see you next time.